Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, you are very much welcome. My name is Blessing. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please hit on the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell. So whenever I post a video, you get notified. In today's class, we'll be making this beautiful gown. So if you are interested, keep on watching and let's go. So here is my the fabric I will be using. This is a duchess and it's a three and half yard of duchess. So now what I will do here is to fold my fabric into four. So guys, this is me trying to fold my fabric into four. You can see the way I am folding it. So I'm trying to arrange it in a way that it will it will come out smoothly so that I will take my measurement. So now this is how it comes out. You can see I folded my fabric into four. Then I will just use a paint to hold it down so that it will stay in one place. So the first measurement I will be taking is the length measurement. So I will start, take, my, take my tape from the beginning of this fabric to the ends. So the measurement I'm working with is 55 inches. So go ahead to measure yours and work with your exact measurements. So this is me trying to blend the damp parts in a such a way that it will level up equally so i added one inch for my stitching allowance as well the next step is to take my shoulder measurement my shoulder measurement is 14 inches when i divide it by two i will have seven inches so i will mark seven inches here then i will just shock it like this okay so now the next Measurement I will be taking is from this shoulder measurement. I will extend it to the length of my sleeve. So I'm marking 12 inches from the shoulder measurement down to 12 inches. I will add 1 inches for my seam allowance. Go ahead to measure your desired length. The next measurement is to take my neckline. I come over to the center front to mark 3 inches for the width of the neckline so for the back depth line the the back for the depth i am using one inches for the back because we are cutting both the back and the front together so i'm um, first of all marking the back then i will connect the one inches to the three inches to the width please i'm sorry that you are not seeing the shock i thought the shock will be showing so I'm really really sorry. Please just pay attention to what I'm seeing. You will understand. So now for the front, for the front of the neckline, which is for the front, I'm using four inches for the front. While for the back, I use one inches. So I will connect the four inches to the three inches width that we marked earlier. Hope you understand it. For the back, I mark one inches. Why for the front I mark four inches. So but the front and the back width must meet together for the width. Hope you understand. So now this is how it is. This is for the front and for the back. So for the depth of the front neckline, I come in by half an inch, then I extended the line down to four inches. Okay. We are trying to make a slant here. So I come that by 4 inches to connect the 4 inches to the half an inch we come in. Hope you are getting what I'm saying. So in a kind of a triangular shape like this. So from the 4 inches we connect it to the half an inch we come in by. So that is it guys. So the next step we will be doing is to just draw our fabric upward so that we can see what we are doing at the damp part. So, for the damp part here, I will divide my hip circumference by 4. So, my hip circumference is 42. I, I divide it by 4. Then, I will add 1 inches for ease. Then, one, another 1 inches for my seam allowance, making it 2 inches. Okay? So, one inches for my is one inches for seam allowance, which is six. So now I will just copy everything that I have plus the seam allowance and the 
is i'll copy everything then i will mark it all through to the top okay you can see me marking it just everything the the hip measurements plus the allowance and the ease i will just mark everything and i will just be marking it to the top like so okay So you can see that I am extending this line up. So now, what I did here is that I, from the shoulder, I come down by 12 inches, and that will be the round sleeve of this top of this gown. Sorry, I come down from the shoulder to the to 12 inches. That will be the round sleeve. So I just copy what I have from the shoulder to the sleeve length so i just copy it to that 12 inches the reason why i'm doing it is to have a straight line there okay i copy plus shoulder measurement and sleeve length i copy everything to have to where my 12 inches is so that i can have a straight line like this you can see i have a straight line like this so i will just connect the straight line like this okay so after connecting my straight line I will now mark my hip measurements plus my allowance up to that 12 inches. Okay, I will continue my marking. Continue my marking. I will just mark up to the 12 inches. Okay, you can see me doing that. When I get to where my 12 inches is, I will stop. So that is it, guys. So now, I will just go ahead to, to rule the line up. I will rule the, all the dots. I will just rule them up. That's what you see me doing now. So I will connect the hip measurement. I will connect it to the, the round sleeve measurement, which is the 12 inches, where the 12 inches stopped. I will, I will just connect it like this, okay? Just pay attention to it, you understand? It's very simple. This is me just trying to connect all my lines. So I will come over to this part here. I will mark three inches like this. Okay, I mark two inches. Then I come to this the other side. I mark two inches to make a curve. You know the handhold is not pointed, so we need to make a curve there. Okay, so that is the way. That is how to create a curve in that part. Okay, you can see I'm using my French curve to create a curve in between the two ham the ham pits. Okay. So you can see that it's not pointed that part at that part. So now the next step is to take our shoulder slope. Because the shoulder is not equal, guys. So I use me connecting the shoulder slope to the neck with like this you can see me doing it i'm using a, a ruler to just connect it so basically we are done i'll just go ahead to cut it out i'll first of all cut the back remember the back we use a one inches for the depth of the back so i'll first of all cut the back before i will cut trim at the front neckline so just watch me as i cut So guys, after cutting, this is how it looks like. So I will just go ahead to remove the bag from 
the front so i'll separate the back from the front then i will arrange rearrange the front so that it will be very smooth for me to cut out the the neckline of the front you just arrange it in a proper way so that the front you will cut it accurately so this is me trying to arrange the front so i'll just go ahead to follow the mark that we marked earlier to trim out the front you can see me doing that so I'll just trim out the front like this okay guys if you have watched up to this moment and you have not liked this video please like this video and if you have not subscribed to my channel please i will appreciate so much if you hit on the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell thank you so much so guys the next step now is to do the facing of the the front slits or oh, i will like put this part here the opening of the front you just just the opening you do the ensure that you have uh, two inches above the the opening ab above the opening and below the opening just ensure that you have some inches below the opening and above the opening i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say here exactly look at what i'm trying to say ensure that you have some inches below the opening here this is what i'm trying to say you are marked two inches below so i will just go ahead to pin it down so that you can cut it well okay just pin it in a way that it will not uh, fold up just pin it in such a way that it will come out very well okay that it will not be squeezed so that is it so i'll just go ahead to retrieve the the slits opening this is the front slit i don't know how to call these parts at this moment yeah but hope you understand what i'm trying to see here so i'll just retrieve it like this just watch me carefully you will understand more better so you just this is the facing okay i'll just trim it like this please don't add any allowance just trim exactly okay so you just trim it like this just look at what i'm doing and do the same trim it like this okay okay so after trimming now i will remove my pin from the uh, the fabric and i will remove the main fabric then this is how it will be looking like so we cannot just leave the sharp edge at there at that part so we need to curve that sharp we need to eliminate that sharp edge there by curving it you can see the way i am curving it so that we will eliminate that sharp edge so we cut it off and we open it and when you open it you can see that there's nothing like sharp edge at the point there it's all round so the next step now is to bring in my interfacing i will just go ahead to iron it to it and this is how it comes out after applying my interfacing on the i just go ahead to weave it although my weaving machine is too stubborn it's giving me an issue so i can't be able to do it neatly so that is it so I'll just go ahead to place right side meeting right side like this and take it to my sewing machine and sew just so according so here yeah, i've sewed it so i'll just go ahead to, to notch the necessary part i notch the v part there just notch it the reason why i'm notching this part is because so that it will relax well after turning you can see i turn it in like this i just sewed just the 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 v part there i did not sew it up to the neckline so I just go ahead to use my hemming gum now to attach it so that it will stay to the main fabric. 
So now I've ironed my inter uh, my emi gum using my ending go to hold both the interface and the main fabric together. So you can see it comes out neatly there. You can see the V part very sharp there. So the next step now is to bring the back and the front together and uh, ensure that it's right side meeting right side and just place it the shoulder to shoulder like this and go to the sewing machine and run a stitch by half an inch on the shoulder. So guys, this is how it comes out. You can see I open it up and I ironed it after sewing. So the next step is to fold my the sleeve. Just fold half an inch twice and take it to my sewing machine and I will run a stitch there. Also, I will do the same thing to the down part. I will fold it twice, half an inch twice and sew. So guys, this is how it comes out. You can see I sewed it and I gave it a very good press so that it will be very neat there. You can see the down part is very neat and I press it very well. So this next step, step is to determine the slip opening. So I come up by 22 inches from there to 22 inches and I make a notch there. Okay. And I will do the same thing to the other side. This for the sleeve, the slits at the side. Okay. So I will just do the same thing like so and I will mark it 22 as well and I will also notch it. So now from the notch part there, I will start joining my side together using one inches. So you remember we had one inches for our seam allowance. So is that one inches we will use to hold the back and the front together from the arm from the the sleeve to where our slits we uh, we, st we stop at where the slits ends okay so you can see this i'm just marking my one inches all around like this so i'll just curve it and mark my one inches like so okay and i will stop at where my sleeve started i'll just stop at where i notched there so guys, I've sewed and I went ahead to notch this cuff part so that it will relax well. I just notch it so that it will relax very well. So I did the same thing to the other side as well. I notched it as well. So the next step now is to fold our sleeve, our slit. Just open it, the seam up and fold it according to the seam allowance. You know, so one part is one inches, one inches. Then you fold it half an inch twice to sew on it okay so now you can see that i've folded the sleeve slit and i i sewed i iron it as well so that is a comb as well so that is that for this one take this one aside let's work with the pocket so for this pocket this i first of all mark nine inches by by 11 inches but i later change it because is too wide for my lightness so now i will curve my pocket the side pocket for this side i will just curve it for the side like this you can see i curve it i curve it like this so that it will be round at the end not sharp okay so i will just curve it like so but then i let her the length and the wideness, I later change it because I see that it's too wide to my likeness, to my liking, sorry. So, I later reduce it. So, like I said before, I said I later reduce it. You can see I reduce it to the length is now 8.5, while the wideness, the length is uh, 9 inches, sorry, and the wideness is 7. Okay, the wideness is about 7.5, yes, 7.5 by nine inches so i am good to go with this one so this is the fabric that i will be using to wrap the side so for the fabric i marked two i have cut out two inches i cut out two inches like this you can see it's two inches i cut out two inches then i folded half an inch on both sides i folded half an inch on both sides then i fold it into two like like a bias shape so this I will be using this one now to 
to cover up the rough edges at this part i will open it up and put i will put this listing in between the the bias strip i don't know if you understand just put the rough edge in between the fabric okay just do it i'll first of all paint it like this i put the rough edges in between the fabric remember we folded it into two so you open it up and put the rough edge in, inside in between those two like this and first of all pin it down before take it to your sewing machine and sew so guys you can see that i have pin it up to the up so now i'll take it to my sewing machine now and i will sew so yeah here it comes i have sewed it and this is how pretty it comes out you can see the back and i've went ahead to hold the upper part as well i fold the upper part and i stitch on it so now it's time for us to add or stitch our pocket to the fabric so now what i did here is that i mark where the pocket will be so i marked 19 inches from the shoulder to 19 inches so i will do the same thing to the other side you can see i'm marking 19 inches like this so this part here this part i shop is here i will attach my pocket now i will open it up like this i will just wide um, open it in a such a way that this joining will be at the middle like this okay so at the part where i shock is it will just give me guidelines for me to know where i will attach my pocket you can see I am trying to make the two equal. I don't want one side to be longer than one. Okay, so this is me trying to trying to shake it like I want to know exact what I'm doing here, so that the two sides will be very accurate. So, so now I place in the way that I want. Okay, so now what I will do now is that I will bring one of my I will put one of my hand inside to paint it. Note that you will not pin it on the two parts, like you will put pin it on one side of the dress. Okay, just put your hand inside of the dress like this and uh, pin it so that it will not pin the other side. Hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Just watch me, just pin it like this so that it will not get to the down, the, the down, the sickle side of the fabric. So, this is how it's this. So, I will just take it to my sewing machine. And I will stitch it. So now, guys, I've pinned it. I've pinned the other side. So I will stitch it like this. I will just stitch it. I'll just open, just just only this part, this up fabric that you put, you will sew on. Just this part like this. You will not. It will not get to the other side. It's just this very one here that you will stitch on. You just stitch close to the the fabric. You just stitch. So guys, this is how it comes out after stitching. So this is it. This is the other pocket. Next step now is for the hoodie. So this is a, I will be using pattern for this hoodie. So first thing, what I will first of all do is to bring out this fabric. I will measure the, the neck width. Just the neck width. I will measure it round the front and the back. I will just measure it round like this. And after everything, I have 15 and a half inches. So before we start, I will first of all mark one inches. Or let me say, let me take the length first. So I'm using 17 inches for my length. So first of all, I will first of all mark one inches like this. I will mark one inches from starting to the end day like this. Okay. So after marking, I will use a ruler to just roll it up. I will roll it up, just connect the dot together. To make it a straight line like this so now all our measurement will start from this line that we mark okay this line that we mark all our measurements will start from there so now the the, the after mark, uh, marking my neck width i have 15 inches right so i will divide that 15 inches into two like this so after dividing my 15 is uh, 15.5 inches into two 
then I will mark what I have like this, okay? Starting from this line that we mark, I will just mark it. I will start it from there and I will mark it. And that will be the width of our hoodie. So I will just mark it from the starting and I will add one inches to it as seam allowance, okay? Just add your seam allowance to it so that it will not have shortage. So from there now, we just mark what I have all together. So I will just be marking it like that down to the, the full length, which is the 17 inches. So I will mark it like this. Then I will use a straight ruler now to just connect the lines. Okay. So now guys, you can see I've... Uh, connect it now I'm trying to crochet my lines if they are intact okay please only crochet your lines because some of the tape or some of the mark we usually add some to it okay so this is me trying to crochet my line and I see that there's a, a little uh, error there so I am trying to correct the the mark so so I will just connect it. I find out that I have some S's there. So it's better you crochet your measurements before you cut than to make a wrong measurement. You see all this, some of the inches that we add, it matters. So you see the other side of the line is no longer needed. It's out of this game because it's no, I mistakenly just add it as me. I add it now. It will. I just decided to use this other one because this is the accurate measurement. So now here it will be the center front of the hoodie and center back of the hoodie. Okay, I'm trying to label it so that we understand what we are doing here. So now the first thing now we'll be doing. You can see I'm still crocheting my measurement to be very sure of what I am doing. So I don't need any error at all. So guys. What will we do now? The first thing we'll be doing is to come to the center front here. Come to the center front here and we mark half an inch. Okay? We mark half an inch at the center front. Okay? This is the, this is the part that we review with your face. So from this down here, I will come up by 3.5 inches. Yep. Come up by 3.5 inches, then I will connect it to meet the 3.5 inches. You can see the way I'm connecting it, so I will just connect it like this in a kind of curving, just curving, not too straight. So, this is it, guys. This is all for the front. So, let's work with the back, the center back. So, you can see that the center back we have some excess at the back, the curve at the back, so that it can occupy your your head so what we do that we come in by 3.5 inches from the center back we come in by 3.5 inches then first of all we come down by two inches okay so we come down from that two inches now from these two inches we will still come down by 3.5 inches so you can see from this 3.5 inches, now you come out by another 3.5 inches. So this is the all this mark is that to is the point of like making a curve outside. I don't know if you understand me. So like I said, we come in by three inches. Then from the top like this, we come down by two inches. Okay. Then from these two inches again, we come down by 3.5 inches. Okay. So now we need to extend the cap out. So we come out by 3.5 inches as well. Come down by 3.5 inches. So now we come over to the down parts. Then we also come up by 3.5 inches. We 
also come up by 3.5 inches. Now we are through from this. So we need to connect the lines. Just connect these four lines together using your curve ruler. Or you can still use your free hand if you don't have a curve ruler. Just connect this line, this, this, this. And that will give you a kind of round shape at the back. So that is the excess of all these 3.5 inches we have been marking. So just connect it like so. Sure. Hope you understand what I did here. But if you don't still understand, watch carefully. You will understand. It's very simple, guys. Yeah, there's a room for question as well. Please also like this video if you find this video helpful. Please. So just connect this to the other side. You can see that the hoodie shape is coming out. Okay, this is the strip at the back. So if you notice that there is a sharp point there, just eliminate that sharp point because we don't need anything sharp there. So that is it, guys. So the next step we'll be doing, which is the final step for this hoodie, is for the back, just the back. So I will bring out the the fabric, then just the back, the back. I'll just make sure the back neckline. Don't include the front. Just the back neckline. Fold the back neckline into two and measure what you have. I have 3.5 here. So from the center back, I will mark 3.5. Just from the center back, I mark 3.5 to dedicate the, just the back. So from the center back now, I will come up by half an inch. Okay, I come up by half an inch like this. Then I will just connect it to make this 3.5. And that is all, guys. It's so simple as ABC. Very simple. So that is just all for the hoodie. So we just go ahead to cut out our hoodie. So guys, this is how it comes out after cutting my hoodie. So I will use it to cut four of the fabric. So guys, I have cut out my fabric. I noticed my fabric is not enough. So I added some, I joined so that it can be able to reach the hoodie. So I cut the main fabric and the lining, but I will be using this part as lining. And yeah, this other one as the main fabric, okay? So now guys, what we do now is right side meeting right side and I will sew by half an inch. I will also do the same thing to the lining as well. So guys, this is how it comes out after sewing on it. This one I sewed it and this is the lining. I also sewed it the same way I did to the main fabric. So now what we do, just go ahead to open your seam up, iron it very well. So turn it to the right side like this. Okay, and turn the lining to the right side as well. So, right side meeting right side. I showed that the joining meeting each other. The two joining must correspond to each other. Then, take it to your sewing machine and run from the center down. Okay, just down and also do the same thing to the other side. So, when I'm through, I will come back and show you how it comes out. So guys, this is it. I've sewed it. I've sewed the side like this. So you can see how it is now. So I'll go ahead to turn it to the right side. See, I've turned it to the right side now. Then I will, for the, the I will toastish on it. Okay, I will toastish on it so that it will hold for the two. So now it's time for us to attach the hoodie to the the gown so first of all i will fold the back into two and i will shock the middle so i will just shock the middle no need for me to notch just use a shock to identify the middle so that you will know where to start from so please me using a shock to identify the middle 
So now what I will do now is that I will bring out the hoodie. I will bring out the hoodie and uh, place the center back. The center back which is the joining. Ensure that the joining meets in the and use first of all sew one of it to the main fabric. Okay, you can see that I remove the other one, the lining. I remove the lining and I sew the fabric meaty fabric. Okay, fabric meaty fabric, and I will sew it all round. I will just first of all pin it down first. Please, guys, when you want to after pinning, ensure that the hoodie. The ends of the hoodie miss the ends of the the neckline. This part that we joined for the hoodie, ensure that it's it's meets the the ends of uh, the the neck uh, the neck width. I don't know if you understand. Look at what I'm trying to say here. These two parts must correspond together. The two edge. This part that I joined for the hoodie. Must correspond with the 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 neck with the where the V V starts from. I don't know if you understand. Okay, so now we just sew it like that. You can see the other side starting in the joining meeting each other. Okay, so after that, now we'll just go ahead to sew. So, guys, you can see I have sewed it. I've sewed the fabric, the hoodie, the main fabric with the gun together. Now it's time for us to use the lining to cover up the rough edges. The this the sewing part where we sew, we will use it, the lining to cover it up. Then we will fold the lining inside to toss stitch on top of the rough edges so that the insides we will meet. Okay, so you can see me folding it like this. To cover up the rough edges so i'll quickly do that and show you guys how it looks like so guys this is how it comes out you can see that it's very neat i have to station you can see this side is very neat you can see very neat guys if you have not liked this video please like this video even share this video and also comment on this video so just go ahead to give it a very good press and it will come out like this so this is the end of today's tutorial i'm just going to put it on for us to see so guys this is the final look of this gun looking pretty and beautiful if you enjoyed this video please give us a huge thumbs up and if you have not subscribed please subscribe to this channel also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i i have a very beautiful video to post you will be notified. Thank you so much for watching. I don't take your time for granted. Bye. See you in my next one.